Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Cinema and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we're taking a look at Marco Polo 2 which is the sequel to Marco Polo 1 it was actually called The Voyage of Marco Polo and it is made by designers Daniel Tacchini and Simona Luciani it plays from 2 to 4 players in about 30 minutes per player it does if you're not playing with people who have a lot of AP yeah that's me that is you I wasn't saying it but I can point fingers <laughs> yeah you can like that so yeah this is the sequel that's something that's happening in board games now it seems like it's the second sequel I know of yeah it's Glenmore 2 more more and then we have Marco Polo 2 more more no it's actually called in more. the service of the Kong Kong yeah Come! All the theme. Yes, yes, it is. So uh, we didn't pick this up in Essen because uh, things uh, wasn't really one that was high on my list. I'm saying my it's over list, but I'm making the list because you don't research games. So on your shopping list. <laughs> on my shopping list, that you just say it's okay. 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 So this year is not going to be any shopping in Essen. That's mm, sad. Yeah. Sad face. But we are going to sit here in this house and play games. So, Marco Polo 2, that's just rambling, we need to do that at the beginning of each video, we, or else people are going to be like, why are you called board gaming ramblings, you know, you don't yeah. ramble enough. But we have timestamps now. We have, yes, so we you, can have. Go, you can just click overview and you will get there and you will yes. see like, we spent you 16 will... hours. Yeah. Uh, so this was chosen by our Patreon supporters for our review in May, which is now, so um, we did it guys! Yay! Yay! So if you enjoy what we do and you want to decide a bit of what we do, you can go and check out our patreon.com slash boardgamingramblings and you can support us there. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. We that's like fine. you. Anyways, yes. because you are here and you're watching the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what should you do? Subscribe. You right should. now. Just how, do it. How do you do that? Just click the button that says subscribe. If it's, it's super simple. If it's grey and says unsubscribe, you're already subscribed. Yeah, not so do not one. click that nope. one. Because that is like going the wrong way where we, where we want to go. Yeah. So with all that out of the way, we need to do that. We need to do the like, comment, subscribe. Just do it because it makes us happy. And it makes YouTube like us and showing our video to more people. And we will get more subscribers, more likes, more comments. And it certainly goes around drill. and around and around. So Marco Polo 2 in the service of the con. I do not know what the theme is, but it's a Euro game through and through. It is a dice placement game where you are going to place dice on this map on different kind of actions. You're going to move around on this map to different cities. Those cities will give you uh, more. It will give you income. It will give you one time bonuses. It will give you more actions that you can use. It will give you access to some contracts. And when you get those contracts, you will then be able to exchange different uh, animals. Not different animals, it's just camels, but camels and some different resources uh, into points and other bonuses and that's basically what you're gonna do in the game you're gonna move through the map trying to be at as many different of these symbols as possible on the map you're trying to do the uh, contracts for points and you're also gonna try to complete some of these like town cards I think they're called which are different actions that will be permanent on the board and also gonna be changed up down here so these are going to be, for example, this one, you can trade a camel and a jade for three points. And uh, depending on what number die you place here, you will be able to do that X amount of times. And that is basically what you are going to do in the game. So let's take a bit a look, a bit look. Let's take a short, quick look on the rule book. It's a pretty good rule book. Have you read it? No. It's not like a good book. I wouldn't sit down and read it like before, like, oh, I'm going to sit and read a good book. I would be like, oh, let's read the rule book for Marco Polo too. It's not <laughs> that good of a book, but it's a good rule book, which is more important. Like if this was a really good book, it probably wouldn't be a good rule book. Like it's 200 pages of reading to get through the rules. Yeah. So this um. is 16 pages, really straightforward. What I really enjoy about those these rule books from Seaman is that they have these kind of a color coded for different actions. So for example, here we have this action is green and as long as there's green, you know that you are on the same action. And then here is a, another green action and it's a yellow action and orange action. So you will be easy to distinguish where you are if you want to flip through it and find something that you didn't don't remember. Maybe you haven't played the game in a while or you're like, oh, what is that rule again? Really easy to get to and everything is great explained. I, I think the rulebook here is good. It's gonna get one thumb up. I don't know, that's not a rating system. <laughs> it's not something I'm gonna do. It's not gonna be a rating. It's gonna be three fingers up for this. Uh, I don't know what that means. One finger up? That could be... Uh, it's gonna yeah, get this one, one, the thumb yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. So the, the particular finger up is the thumb. 
So you know what FanBap is. We're not going to talk more about that. Let's talk about the artwork and components, and that's where you come in. Yeah. Not because like artwork and components like a, that a, is my area. It's now. not like that is a woman thing, but it's like oh. it's it's just because <laughs> I do the overviews, and now I've spoken. For the last yeah, I'm going to give minutes. Johannes a break now. We should uh, do timestamps. Be like, if you are bored of watching Johannes speak, click here and you'll go straight here, yeah. to, 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 to watch the video speak. <laughs> I think the artworks are great in this game. Uh -huh. They are pretty much the same as in the first Marco Polo game. Yes. So no surprises there. It's more elements in this one mm. though. and But I keep, think that it looks good. Mm. And at the same time makes it really simple to see where what is. So all the symbols on the map that you need to go what the things cost mm -hmm. what you get for the different action what die you need to do the action mm -hmm. and yeah i just think it looks good and works yeah i agree so I'm happy. Yeah, I, I i agree with you like it's a pretty like you you know what you get like you look at yes. it and it's not a, it's not a masterpiece of an artwork but it, it has to, what I, I think is important in, in especially like euro games so there's a lot of information on this yes. board especially at the end of the game uh, when you are, have your huts all around the trading post and you're trying to see where you can go and trying to see what you can do, it's easy to 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 miss an action. But like, oh, why did I do that action? Mm. I forgot that existed. And I think that works really well here because it is like it's it's function over art. Like it's it's mm. more important for the artist to make something that works graphically and makes it work while it makes it possible to play the game yeah. than it being like a beautiful artwork. <laughs> I wouldn't have this on my wall. Like I wouldn't. Nah, it, it, without but like look all at this the beautiful. <laughs> without all the contracts on all the action spaces and the color cards, dice, yeah. uh, it looks kind of like a beige desert. Yes. Not super beautiful, but it needs to stay that way for mm -hmm. everything to yeah make sense. So you're not like looking your eyes tired yeah, 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 to yeah. find what you need to find. So it's 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 fine. Yeah, like it's it, fine. It, it, it's it's I it like works. it. I I like it quite a bit because it is like the classical Euro thing. So if you if you enjoy that, you will like this. If you don't enjoy that, you won't like how this looks, basically. Mm. And and that's what I have to say about that. Yeah, and at the end of the game, like now, it pops with color with all mm -hmm. the dice and stuff. Absolutely. So we have played this game with two players and three players. Yeah. The game box has 30 minutes per player, and I would think that might be actually true. If you play with players who haven't have a, doesn't have a lot of that AP. is not me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and also I, I also take my time a bit, but most of it is you. Like maybe eighty percent are you and 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 twenty percent are me. Yeah, okay, like yeah. we we played it uh, three players took an hour and forty minutes, uh, which is a bit more than thirty minutes per play. Then we played three players uh, another time, which took us about two hours, so a bit more. Mm. And then we play a two player game now, uh, which is the only time we have played it two. Uh, and it took us two hours or like an hour and 55 minutes almost two hours that's Great almost job. doubling the time but i don't think that is more of an us problem than the game problem yeah i think with me playing the game mm -hmm. i think we're going over time most of the time we're playing games anyways yeah it really depends um, on the game yeah absolutely there can be some because there's a lot of elements mm -hmm. to this game especially when the map starts opening up yeah. and you can do like actions over here as mm -hmm. well and then it could be a lot to think about mm -hmm. Um, but I think like the playtime is more, yeah, actually quite re realistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. The, and, but the thing is, like, I think the reason why it's kind of like AP Pro is that there is like you have so few actions and mm. you need to do this, this, this and this. It's not like you do one action and you get a lot of stuff and then we can do more stuff. It's just like with these three actions, I can maybe get enough to do this one contract and then I can get that bonus or maybe I can do the other contract in two more actions. Mm. So you really need to plan your actions. Like you have really few actions, so you cannot you cannot just do an action on a whim and hope that it goes fine. Mm. Like so it's really simple. Like if you if you are AP prone, you you can take a long time to play in this game, which we have shown you like or told you that we have done we haven't shown it but we have told you that that's what happened mm. and i think that's kind of like the, the reason is that it is so you have to plan mm. like for what you're going to do with your dice each round because you you have only those five or maybe six seven actions because you can get some of these uh black dice that will make it uh that will um, throw over there and uh, that you can do, <laughs> do, what you do do more actions with basically but you you need to plan ahead, which is what kind of makes the AP thing. Yeah, and another thing that uh, has to also do with gameplay is mm -hmm. that you... Um, it's a lot of actions that go, don't get blocked off for you. They just cost more money to do because then mm -hmm. you have to pay for the value of dice that you have yourself. Mm -hmm. And that also makes it kind of... In the original Marco Polo, you, you could get more blocked. 
I think. Could you? No. I, okay. It's I'm the just, same thing, I'm just uh, trying to think here. Yeah, but... we are going to try to speak a little bit about the comparisons, but we yes. haven't played Marco Bowie in many years, but we have looked at it and we will get to that soon. So. But anyways, in uh, other worker or dice placement mm -hmm. games, you can just like, oh, I wanted to do that action. Yeah. You took it. Now I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just like, oh, I can, still can do it, but it cost me five coins mm -hmm. then is it worth it for me and i have to do that thought process kind of yeah i don't know that kind of adds to it yeah. for me especially and you spent like 10 minutes thinking about a way to get four points so yes. um my last move of the game yeah and it's not like a game where you end up getting 10 points so that's not like a yeah a big thing but yeah so so that that can happen but it really didn't bother me so we are segueing into to gameplay yes. which is kind of the 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 big thing here i know a lot of people like most people who see this will be like, will Mo probably have played Marco Polo 1 mm. or or have looked at it and will be kind of like, is it worth getting both? Uh, how different are they? And uh, now you probably have seen a couple of reviews because it has been out for some months. Uh, and we haven't played Marco Polo 1 after we, we got this. Uh, but let's just first for me, I'm going to talk a bit about what I thought about Marco Polo 1. Yeah, because I've only uh, played it once, I yes. think, yeah, yeah. so I don't remember an awful lot about it. No, I remember some things and I have looked at the board and things. So some of the, let's just talk about my feelings about the, the Marco Polo 1. I never loved Marco Polo. I thought it was a good game, but it was really tight and I, I never got it. Like I... I won it the first time I played because then probably the, the player I played with haven't played it, it was just like one of us had to win. But I, I, after that I never won the game, I played it almost 10 times. And it's not important for me to win, so that's not the reason why I didn't like it. But it, it's just like, and it's not like I didn't like it, but it's just like there's it's something in that game that I, I don't understand. And in some of Simone and Daniela's games, like Sulkin and all that, that game, Sulkin, never got it. Never understood how to do it. But I wanted to get back to to master it. I never felt that with, with Marco Polo. Mm. I think I played them almost the same amount of times, but I never felt like I needed that getting, I've never been like, oh, I really want to get back to play that. Uh, and that's kind of the way I felt about that. So um, should I talk about some of the differences? Yeah, because you do probably it. don't remember a lot yeah, of those. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so first of all, like this, this game is a lot more about traveling because in Marco Polo 1, you could basically be staying in Venice you could move like one or two spaces and then just focus on contracts. Here it's a bit hard to do that because the contracts are on the board. There are one, two, three, four, five spaces with contracts. And to be able to go and do the contracts action and take contracts, then you have to be uh, on, have a trading post on some of these places. And if I'm only over here, like let's say I do one move over here, I could stand there for the rest of the game, but I would be stuck only getting to choose these. And probably more players were able to go here as well, so I would be having really like not having first picks on that. So that is the thing that makes it more um, so that you will have to move more. Uh, also, it's easier to move because now there's three different actions that makes you that uh, you can move in. There's one for one die where you can move at max one. There's one for two dice where you can move up to three, and there's one for three dice where you can move up to six and place a second trading hut. So in the original, you uh, place dice and then and there was only, and you had to place three dice, I think, to move. Mm. Uh, two or three dice, I do not remember exactly. Two, two dice to move, okay, you, you just looked at it, yeah. I think so. I think, yeah, so two or three dice. And then you paid money depending on like the lowest die you had and how many spaces you wanted to move. Here, it's a different, different cost for each different lane that you want to move. Some have uh, rivers where you need these guild tiles from different guilds. So for example here, I would have the, I don't know if you see it, but I had like the pot, the pot boat. That sounds like something else. I now have a pot boat. Uh, that's not in this game. Uh, and then I can move on some rivers. If you don't have the boat, you cannot move on those rivers. And that's kind of like a big deal as well. Where kind of like shortcuts or cheaper ways to move and then like to get into bulk, for example, if you want to continue from there, you have to do that. Also, each like this, it's bulk, Baghdad, and Hormus has this kind of special action that makes a lot better if you have these skill tiles and you have flipped them over, and that will give you income as well. And so that's kind of different. And then you have the new uh, resource Jade, which is basically another way. Just uh, it can be used as a camel or a coin. We haven't ever done that because mm. it's so much easier to get a coin on a camel than to get a Jade. Uh, but then you can use the jade here down at the market to exchange for other uh, things that will make it better. So you can also then, this is like kind of the overview again, but it's kind of like the, the differences. 
And this is also a thing that makes it a lot different because it is more tactical. Because these kind of actions, they exchange of so these and marketplace actions they will be changing up every round and also you have two of these uh, special actions which are on the original one as well on the board here there are two of them that are open for everyone and they will also change each round so you can kind of like that is the one i feel like is the most lucky mm. because you can in a, when you're first player you can just get a flipped one as oh this is going to give me 18 points mm. i can just take that that's kind of like, that that won't happen because that's a huge coincidence yeah you need to have exact resources at the exact time and all of that so those are kind of like the main differences. I feel like this is, it's a bit, it's still hard to get resources, but it's easier because mm. Marco Polo, Marco Polo is a lot more punishing. It's a lot more, in a way, I just talked about the mm. planning. You have to plan even more um, to, to get the things you, you needed. I felt like I could never get anything. I feel like it's a bit nicer, especially the way that you can move more. You have the jade that you can, if you get some jade in different ways, you can get them from some special actions, some different actions, some contracts, and you can exchange that into loads of resources that you then can use for more contracts. And that is kind of the, 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 the gist I feel like. It, it feels for me like a lot of the same game, mm. but it feels just like a bit nicer and a bit more uh, easier to get into. Yeah. I know I rambled a lot about that. Yeah, you did. But I didn't think you have anything to say about that. So basically... Yeah, I agree with everything you said. Because that is kind of what I remember. Uh -huh. uh, I think there's a lot more like things happening in this game. Mm -hmm. With all these um, actions on the board changing up with, this, with each game. So they're different each mm -hmm. time you play it. It's the it. same in the first one. Yes. Yeah. And also, I, I really like this. There are the special guys in the first one as well uh -huh. but this one this i really like these are like the uh unique player power that you get that gives you like this op yeah super power that breaks some rules basically that was kind of like the, the big thing in marco polo as well i, the... I like those a lot a lot of them are really different a couple of ones are kind of the same like the one that make you have two characters on the board that's kind of like the same like Marco Polo was in the beginning or in yes. the first game. But I feel like this, we know we touched on the things that are different and mm. the things that are. So, which one you like? Like, we, which, for you at watching, which one you will enjoy the most? We can't say. Like, it, it, because mm. it really depends on what you want, and you might just enjoy one for one kind of group and one for another kind of group, depending on what you like. I really like, I read a lot of comments on Board Game Geek, and it, like, it really split. Mm. Like, a lot of people really like the first one better, and a lot of that people cool. really like this one better. And I think that kind of shows how we all enjoy different kind of games. Yeah. Because even though it's mainly the same game, like it is it is mainly the same game. Like mm. it feels like the same game. But like it's a lot of familiar things, but it's changing up enough that it will talk to two different kind of groups. Mm. If you enjoy like the really harsh, really super tight Euro games, which I usually do, which is one of the things that makes me like strange. I don't like Marco Polo too much, but just something about it out of my brain. This is a bit nicer. It's still tight. Mm. It's still not easy to get what you want. I mm. feel like yes. I can do agree, yeah. But it, it's still like it's still nice and it's still tight, tight. But it's a bit nicer. Yeah, I agree. I really like like in both the, the old one and in this mm. the um, action selection with the dice mm. that you don't necessarily block each other. I really like that aspect of it that you have to like overweigh is this worth all my coins or oh, could yeah. I wait till next turn mm -hmm. and hope that I'll be first to get it. Yeah. And I like that you can buy these uh, black dice mm -hmm. that you're kind of fighting for oh, yeah. sometimes. Uh, all the time. Yeah, all the time. And I also really like that they've loosened up the traveling action. Mm -hmm. so that it, it makes more sense and it you're kind of um, i don't know forced to travel more in this version. oh yeah yeah absolutely mm. it's, it's a big it's a big like a lot of people said like oh but you don't really have to travel in the last one and, and yeah. you could you could do strategies that you never traveled only a couple of spaces so here it's more like you you have to you don't have to like do do an all out travel thing but because of the contracts because of that you need to to be a bit around the board yes i feel like and i I'm, I'm, yeah so 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 that's kind of like a lot of things that's not saying how much we like the game so uh, should we talk a bit about that as well yeah do you uh, like the game is it fun like this is all the things that are different and, and and that could be horrible or it could be fun so what do you think do you like this i i really like marco mm -hmm. polo i i like this as well uh i think i like this more mm -hmm. based on my memory of it i i i really enjoy it mm -hmm. it's it's 
a pure fun Euro game and it's based on really solid mechanisms for mm. the, from, from the first game. Yeah, so, so what do you like? I, I, I like the dice, uh, the work, what do you call it? The dice, dice placement, placement yes. as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. I like the vari variability that you kind of need to see what's on the board, yeah. which actions that you can get advantage of and move there. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the different ways that you score. You either you try to go heavy for these mm -hmm. contracts or you're traveling a lot and collecting these symbols or you are like me and do both. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and also Humble I like brag. the... I also talked about what I liked about these. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Cool. I think it's a good game. Like it's a... It, kind of fits in the same hole as, as Marco Polo for me. It's good, but I never, I don't think I would see myself suggesting to play it. Like it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing for me with Marco Polo. It's just like, I, I, I did pretty well the last time I played, I actually mm -hmm. won, which I yes. never thought I would do against you because you're really good at this game. But it's just like, it doesn't excite me. Like I, I enjoy the planning and I enjoy planning for the the actions that I need to do that round to get the resources and do that thing, but it doesn't it doesn't give me that feeling of joy. Like when I really have when I play this my favorite game, so I play mm. games I really like that like, oh this is fun, this is amazing. This is more like this is good. Mm. It's yeah. not something that I it's I'm not saying that like being like, oh I wanna play this again and try this strategy or do this. And maybe there isn't like a lot of different strategies here. Like it is it's more about it's more about seeing what you get and, and, and exploiting yeah. like if you if you see, mm. like, you get a, a, at the beginning, you're going to draw from these characters. If you see, like, oh, this action is there and this action is there. Mm, yeah. Maybe now, if I get this character, that would be amazing to exploit that kind of thing. Mm. And it's more that. And I feel like Marco Polo 1 is that as well. Like, we play that with somebody and just, they just build up to one of these contract cards and just did that. Six times, two rounds, and there's 60,000 points and one. I feel like this is kind of the same thing that you, you're trying to see the board state at the beginning of the game and trying to find some ways to exploit that board state and, and, mm. and, and, and. And the actions that come out and then of course if you you have to grab some opportunities for the cards that come out one and again or, or randomly uh, but it's not something that makes me jump with joy so it's 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 good but it's not something that is amazing do we need to own the both of them hmm. what do you think i think for now like because i'm me i would like to keep them both yeah because i think it's a good game um i wouldn't like I yeah I think I would would keep them both so far because I, I know you you would probably if you, if you were to 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 to, to um, get rid of one of them it's gonna be the, the first one. No, actually I haven't decided okay, because cool. it's so long since I played the original. Oh, yeah. So my conclusion is that I would uh, I will play the old one yeah. one once more and then I would get rid of one of them. Okay. Yeah. It's it, the differences are uh, in my mind a little like Olubari and uh, Snowdonia. Yeah. They're kind of the same but also a little different and yeah. I don't think I need to own them. Both. Yeah, but and also, I haven't decided which one yet because I don't remember all of the last one. Mm -hmm. But it's also kind of like Bros and Bros Birmingham, like yes. Lancaster and Bros Birmingham, because they're it's the same system but two different games. Yes, absolutely. And they feel different enough to be two different games, yes. but they are not. And and of those two, I want to keep both, but it's not my favorite game, so it's not gonna yeah. probably do that. Bros is one of our favorite games. It is. Yeah. So should we do some final thoughts? Yeah, I think we've actually. I've I've thought I've, I've thought some final thoughts already. Uh, so you can sort them. Yes, uh, all I've said, you've heard it all basically. That's some great final thoughts. <laughs> I I enjoy this more than you. Mm -hmm. I I really want to play this again. I I think it's a really solid uh, dice placement game mm -hmm. with a lot of uh, things to explore with these awesome people that you can play with. Yeah. So I'm going to give it a eight. Cool. Yeah. So I like this. It's solid. For me, it is it's kind of like a game on a pile of games, but it's a bit more. Like yeah. it's like it's a, it's a bit higher than that. I I think like if someone said, "Low, oh, I really want to play that." I would be like, "Okay, we can play that." If I can choose the next okay. five games, yeah. okay, <laughs> we can play that. No, no, I wouldn't be. I, I would be okay if you if you really wanted to play it. I, I would play it. But the thing is that if there's so many other Euro games with these kind of mechanisms, not exact mechanisms, but that gives me this kind of feeling of planning and and squeezing out that resource, squeezing out those points in a way that makes me happier, in a way that makes me have more fun. Mm. So for me, I think this is good, but it's I wouldn't be sad if we ever never played it again. Mm. So I'm going to give it a 7. Yeah. And that's the end of the video. Yes. Right. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Sudama. And you've been watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And bye-bye.